for her statement. I will now give the floor to His Excellency Edi Rama, the Prime Minister and Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Albania. And may I request the protocol to escort His Excellency. يسرني أن أرحب بمعالي السيد إيدي راما رئيس الوزراء ووزير شؤون I have great pleasure in welcoming Mr. Edi Rama, Prime Minister and Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Albania, and invite him to address the General Assembly. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, for more than seven decades since this podium was raised to withstand the weight of the entire world's concerns, and about more than a half of the century since the gloomy histories of the Cold War, bright promises of democratic reconstruction in aftermath to the Berlin Wall, and caring on the needy people, as was, among others, the case with Kosovo Albanians in face of the genocide in late 90s, have passed through these walls. Still, even in the 74th session of the General Assembly, this hall has again witnessed a dozen of complaining voices, various diverging worldviews, and a substantial number of predictions on incoming threats. Many years after the end of history was announced, and vast enthusiasm on globalism has prevailed, we underwent through the worst economic recession since the Great Depression of 1930, experienced the rise of the violent extremism and terrorism, beginning with Al-Qaeda, killing nearly 3,000 innocent people on 1911, and got exposed to a climate change whose effects are felt in the air we breathe in 21st century. Globalism can be criticized or endorsed. After all, this does not matter. What matters is that it exists. Nationalism might sound an attractive alternative at times, and so it appears especially nowadays. But the range of issues we together face is essentially transnational. Willy-nilly, we find ourselves in a context where the distinction between national interests and global priorities is largely blurred, if not entirely dissolved. We do live in a world that, in parallel with increasing opportunities, new threats are emerging at horizon and new risks are appearing at fore. Even worse, a number of such threats and risks, despite how well vocalized, do not usually receive the proper response. We live under the ozone that is thickening and climate that is melting icebergs. While security mechanisms have been sophisticated and intelligence mechanisms were improved, illegal migration, radicalization, and extremism, organized crime and human smuggling, has not challenged just our security environment, but also the quality of our democracy. This range of issues clearly requires the mobilization of national capacities, but also a much more efficient interaction in the transnational level. Mr. President, last Friday I had to interrupt my flight to New York while landing in Frankfurt because my country was struck by a powerful earthquake. The country has been severely damaged 
but thank God no life was lost. As, the, as these were not enough, just before the aftershocks had subsided, the country was conquered by a storm and torrential cycle of rain, which made the situation even more unbearable for the vulnerable people. Science has progressed a lot. Whether for good or bad, this goes well beyond this discussion, but not enough as to be able to predict the emergence of earthquakes in advance. However, if this is the case with earthquake, this is certainly not the case with the climate change, the deterioration of which can be dealt beforehand in a number of ways. Anyhow, no country on earth is sufficiently immune against hostilities of distorted nature, neither strong enough to cope with it. So I'm pleased to inform you that Albania has been working hard on achieving the United Nations global goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 45% in the next decade and to net zero emissions by 2050 in accordance with Paris Agreement of 2016. In addition, we have adopted the strategy on climate change, mitigation action plan of greenhouse gas emissions, as well as the national plan for adoption to climate change. This makes Albania the first and the only country in the Western Balkans to have a consolidated strategy on climate change. We have undertaken a number of many other initiatives to keep our sky blue and make the horizon or of our future look greener. New energy efficiency standards in construction, a coming ban on non-degradable plastic bags, a moratorium on hunting and lodging, and a growing tree planting campaign are only part of our ambition to make Albania a leading example in the green agenda. This endeavor, in fact, also serves as a reminder that the climate action requires daily commitment. This is true of climate change, but this is certainly true when it comes to that other great concern we all share about the world today, security. There is a saying from a long-experienced army general, if I'm not mistaken, that there are two sort of countries in the world, small countries and the countries that are not aware that at the end of the day, they are still small. Albania might be a small country from a global perspective, but yet is aware of its global responsibility. Since the decade of NATO membership, regardless of the vast challenges it has faced, Albania has deployed its troops in Kosovo Bosnia and Herzegovina, Latvia, Mali, and Afghanistan, in order to leave a mark in a world that should be safer and anticipate the future that must be brighter. Only a few months ago, two Albanian soldiers who served in NATO's enhanced forward presence in Latvia lost their life in line while dismantling explosives. Albania proudly remembers them today in world's largest gathering of all nations. Their martyrdom is a universal reminder of the noblest of causes, protection of freedom security and providing security to maintain freedom. Regardless of such tragic loss, which, hurtly, which hurts deeply and left a void in our souls, Albania still expresses its deep willingness and its firm readiness to take up new responsibilities in Iraq in order to support its stabilization efforts. After the triumph on ISIL was declared, each of the nations gathered here shall be aware of the risks that come along with post-caliphate metamorphosis. That is, small terrorist groups that might seem to have finally disappeared, but still retain their capacity to launch brutal attacks. 
the size of the territory, neither its geographic location, does not prevent world's nations from carrying out the responsibilities they have and meeting obligations that are required. Albania is particularly concerned by Iran's destabilizing behavior in the Middle East, but also often disruptive activities in relation to the Iranian opposition community, who have generously been hosted in our country after having been subject to despicable massacres elsewhere. We had to react firmly in relation to a number of Iran's illicit activities against our national security interests, and we stand firm on the side of the countries that have been hurted by such activities, both on the sea and in their land. Despite the number of population, the size of territory, or geographic location, no country is too small to perform its global responsibilities. Albania will build upon such a multilateral experience by taking an increasing multilateral commitment. Next year, Albania will take the chairmanship of the OSCE with a spe special focus on protracted conflicts in and around Ukraine, Nagorno-Karabakh, Transistria, to mention but few cases. Albania will also devote a special attention to fight against any form of discrimination, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia first and foremost, by relying on its example of inter-religious tolerance, as well as strengthening the role of the women in peace-building activities by reflecting the feminist spirit of the nation. Albania has provided a century-long historical example on how harmony among Muslims, be they Sunni or Bektashi, and Christians, Catholic or Orthodox, and Jews, is not only accidentally possible, but also socially fruitful. Even though often regarded as a Muslim majority country, we are the land where St. Teresa is the highest national symbol, after having been for a long time as Mother Teresa, our most distinguished daughter. It is perhaps such human solidarity and commitment to universal goodness that should still guide us in facing great threats to peace and security around the globe today. Given its exceptional historical example, as well as its now highly mature multilateral experience, Albania do not any longer hide the ambition to serve as a non-permanent member in the United Nations Security Council during 2022 and 2023. So I call on all nations assembled here today to take a positive note of Albania's Security Council bid for 2022. Needless to remind, having global ambitions that does not mean lacking regional attention. Western Balkans, from where I come, underwent long history of oppression and conflict. Region as a whole underwent two of the 20th century cruelest evils, communist dictatorship and inter-ethnic wars. As a real result of this heritage, Western Balkans happen to be the most underdeveloped region at the heart of Europe, with a number of disputes still going on. Albania has particularly celebrated the reaching of PRESPA agreement, which put to an end a decades-long dispute between Greece and North Macedonia. Albania was actively engaged in making it possible and see it as an inspiring example for settling other open disputes. In order to build stronger ties and streamline our cooperation by building a roadmap for connectivity and mobility in our region, Albania is working closely with Kosovo, Montenegro, 
and North Macedonia and look forward to do so with Serbia itself. However, despite the fact that the climate of regional cooperation has improved significantly, the open dispute between the Republic of Kosovo and Serbia still hinders the potential of the development of the whole region. Regardless of the issues that a young democracy like Kosovo might naturally face, it is more than clear that for a bit more than a decade since its independence was declared, Republic of Kosovo has managed to build a vibrant democracy, prove itself as a reliable partner in the region, and never wavered from its Euro and Atlantic commitment. The time has come that all countries of this assembly, especially and firstly our Serbian friends, recognize the independence of Kosovo to do justice to history and to acknowledge reality as the only reliable base to build a common, better future. Dear Serbia, independent Kosovo is a reality that cannot be reversed. So stop living in denial and make history for yourself and the world by landing in the space of reality. It is important, too, that Kosovo has been given the opportunity to join all international and regional organizations that any sovereign independent country in the world has a right to join. And it's my sincere hope and my daily commitment that the Western Bal Balkans manage to break with their past once and forever and work together to build their economies, integrate their markets, and provide a much better future thinking and working for their children and not talking anymore about their ghosts. In this regard, I must underline a fact that I've stressed repeatedly to my European colleagues. It is inexcusable that Kosovo, a country of just two million people, remains to date the only country where its people are still isolated from the whole network of visa liberalization regime. Listen to this. From 2014, more than 100 million people have been added to the multitude of people that can enter EU with no visa. How possibly EU can still keep hostage just 2 million people that have fought so hard to get their freedom and are so firmly committed to their EU perspective. So, dear EU, stop this nonsense. On this note, I must also emphasize that stability and security, prosperity and democracy of the region can only be guaranteed by European perspective. For this reason, providing a positive response to Albania and North Macedonia's ambition to open accession talks will not merely be a reward of their merits, but also strategically the wisest decision to be taken by the EU for the EU. When the first man stepped in the moon in mid-1960, which, by the way, was not only a sign that man is expanding the limits of universe, but also heading to the future, Albania's universe was the narrowest kind of its orientation backward. 
as the most isolated country on earth. Albania was today's North Korea of back then Europe. While the heritage of the past still affects the dynamics of the country in multiple ways, Albania today joins world's nations in the attempt to build a brighter future by performing its institutional tasks in accordance with 2030 agenda. My government considers the implementation of the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda an important part of Albania's vision for development and integration. Indeed, we see it as an important complement to the agenda determined by our effort to join the European Union. Our national strategy for development and integration combines Albania's European integration agenda with that of the UN 2030 agenda. We are committed to both these agendas for a very simple reason. We believe that they constitute a roadmap for the modernization of our country and institution and for the raising of our society. Among the most important milestones in this agenda are the action plan on Roma, Egyptians, and LGTB, and persons with disabilities, which contain concrete plans, which are being implemented, that will guarantee the rights of these groups that happen to be very often unfairly and unjustly marginalized. In addition to this, we have made great progress in terms of gender equality, with more women than ever before represented in government, parliament, regional councils, and the public administration. And I'm very proud to say that in my government there are more women than men. Quite a good sign to be successful. <clears throat> in his memorable visit in Tirana in, in 2014, Pope Francis advised the youth of Albania to fly higher and higher and higher, but never forget their nest. While this sounds almost divine advice, it is also absolutely a realistic demand, not only for Albania, but apparently for the entire region. We are pursuing special programs to enable our diaspora anchor their future with their country of origin in the context of our broader ambition to convert the phenomena of brain drain in the process of brain circulation. Still, there is another element that I would not go without mentioning. Albania's unprecedented justice reform, the process of making a major cleanup by removing corrupt judges and prosecutors from the system, as well as establishing new judicial institutions tailored to tackle corruption and organized crime at highest levels, in transforming the entire physiognomy of the country. The corruption in the judiciary for decades did not only prevent justice from taking place, but became also an impediment to make justice be the rule of our daily existence as a society. As the new justice system gradually takes shape and becomes fully operational, we hope that it will seriously curtail all acts of corruption and abuse of power and will finally assure the triumph of the sense of justice and of the rule of law over all the country, the country I do deeply love and proudly represent it here today. Thank you very much. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank Mr. Eddie Rama, Prime Minister of Albania.